Hello everyone and welcome to this, our second video in the Intel series on the path to the cloud. In our first session, we looked at developing strategy and approach. And today we're talking about possibly the biggest concern that most people have about a move to the cloud, security. Now, as promised back in our first episode, what you're not going to hear is product pitches or plugs for any particular technology. What you are going to hear is real practical advice based on hands-on experience from deep subject matter experts in Intel's own IT function, who've already lived through the adoption of on and off-premise service delivery. And while we get that Intel is a large enterprise, we also know that the principles of cloud security will apply as much to a smaller company as they do to us. So let's get to it. I'm joined today by Shahaf Levi and Shridhar Mahankali. So gentlemen, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you do in security for Intel IT. Hi everyone, my name is Sridhar Mahankali. I'm part of uh, Intel IT's information security and infrastructure architecture team, within which I focus on network security architecture, which covers um, extension to cloud networks as well. Shahaf. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm the cloud security architect. I work with business units, customers, and our own internal teams in securing uh, the usage of cloud. Okay, thank you. So before we get into details, what types of risk are top of mind for customers? After all, security means lots of different things to lots of different people. Shahaf, let me start with you. So misconfiguration is the number one threat to in public cloud. A cloud is complex. It's a multi, think about it as a multi-dimensional cube. And it has a lot of options. So there's also a lot of options of, uh, in making mistakes. So misconfiguration is the number one. That, that's certainly a great point, Shakaf. Developers tend to gravitate towards cloud because of the flexibility that the cloud capabilities afford. At the same time, the developers tend to be more focused on their code, their software development tools, how can they get their product to market faster, and they're less focused on the information security perspectives, especially those aspects which are outside their code or their software. But when you're working in an infrastructure and as a service environment, there is an expectation that the developers need to have a certain level of network and security and infrastructure awareness. And because that tends to be a weak point for a lot of developers, misconfigurations can creep into the infrastructure and their hosting environment, and that can create a lot of risk. Thanks. So are you concerned about cloud being better or worse? Is a cloud service provider more or less of a risk for security? Back to you, Sridhar. I would say that the cloud service providers offer a multi-tenant environment. And because of the multi-tenant environment, you are not only worried about your application framework, you also have to understand and evaluate the security of the underlying cloud infrastructure. If you go back a few years, cloud security was one of the primary detractors, if you will, from enterprises adopting the cloud more. However, the cloud providers have put in a lot of effort, have gotten their capabilities certified by third-party vendors and third-party certifications like they have gotten FedRAM certifications, PCI certifications, SOC2 certifications, and many more. With those certifications, the assurance of the underlying cloud infrastructure has enhanced, and the enterprises feel a lot more comfortable in adopting and consuming the cloud services. So thanks for that. And of course, most cloud users will be familiar with the concept of shared responsibility. Does that do enough though? Shahaf. So cloud is not magical. Uh, you still need to secure the application and the infrastructure on top of the cloud provider infrastructure. So when creating the cloud security architecture, it's across all of the stacks that we have 
Um, we're securing all of these capabilities and all of these uh, options that, that we have in order to make sure that the application and the underlying uh, infrastructure is well secured and, and working together. So is the threat picture the same in the cloud as it is on-premise? Shridhar? In general, developers have a lot of flexibility in terms of consuming cloud capabilities. In addition, the cloud service providers are constantly adding and offering new capabilities almost on a daily basis. What that means is that um, the developers are constantly finding new ways of building their applications and finding new design patterns of consuming uh, the, the cloud services. What that means from an information security perspective is that you have to maintain a constant dialogue with your developers so that you're keeping up with the design patterns, how these dynamic cloud services are being consumed and then adopting or adapting your uh, cloud security capabilities uh, appropriately. So you have to maintain that constant dialogue and that is really the key um, from a cloud service perspective, which is not the same on-premise. And I, I would say also that comparing those specifically, I don't, I don't think it's the right question to ask. I think the question is, what is the risk that each of those uh, have? So in public cloud, it's born in the internet. It has external exposure uh, up front. So, and for example, some of the, of, of the main risks there is exposure of, exposure of data uh, to the internet. And it's very, very simple to do that in the public cloud but you also have potentially better controls there. So it's not a one-to-one a, a -one comparison. You need to define the risk and the controls in each one of these environments. Thanks both. And it's interesting that the theme of paying attention to the developer community always seems to arise with customers. And I think you're, you're validating that now. And by the way, there's a lot more information published in our white paper on that very subject. And the link to it is below. So how does the risk profile differ between infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service? Let me jump in there and take that question. Um, in terms of infrastructure service, platform as a service, and software as a service, the key difference is in the level of control that you have versus the provider. When you look at one end of the spectrum, if you look at software as a service, as a developer, you only need to focus on consuming their cloud services and developing your code, and you don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure and the security thereof, because the service provider, the service provider is taking care of that for you. What that means is from an information security perspective, you're more focused on the external certifications or the third-party validations that the provider has received. And on the other spectrum, when you talk about infrastructure as a service, the provider controls the underlying infrastructure and you have a lot more flexibility in how you build your applications on top of it. Therefore, you have to keep abreast of how the developers are consuming those capabilities, what kind of uh, um, services they're consuming, and um, you essentially have to under, uh, have a much more deeper understanding and you can apply um, the security capability is more tuned to those design patterns. So it varies based upon the level of control that you have uh, with the cloud providers. Great stuff, thank you. So if we switch now to technology differences between public cloud and on-premise, a lot of people are curious, what new capabilities exist within the cloud which make it unique? Chef. Sure. So definitely you have a lot of options and capabilities in public cloud, such as containers as a service, serverless, a lot of, a lot of usage in, in APIs, and also data as a service. This brings a lot of great opportunities for developing in a very fast pace. And also the security controls that comes along with it, like, like native cloud controls that we use and augmenting it with third party, uh, so we have CSPM and so on. All of these blend together and create these new experiences 
in order to support this fast pace of change that we see in public cloud. So for customers who want to follow already well-established best practice, they're curious, what types of models or frameworks exist today which are readily available or even free? So one of the models that I really like is the CSA, the Cloud Security Alliance, uh, CIS, and NIST. And, and there are also many more based on the industry that you're in. But these three are kind of the main ones that uh, I was uh, looking into. Oh, thanks, Shahaf. So what about people, process, organizational designs? What considerations should we take into account there? So this is something that's really important uh, for myself and for our, for our team is that it's super important to have a lot of experts from various teams. So I'll give an example. Uh, Schroeder and myself, we team up together to, uh, to, to secure the hybrid cloud and other aspects. And we have other architects and other teams. So because cloud is comprised of so many aspects in it, we need to combine and, and work together and, and bring all of these capabilities and skill set and blend it and, and we also enrich each other knowledge. So definitely that's a super critical uh, capability. Couldn't agree with you more, Shakaf. A virtual team is really the key, especially in an infrastructure as a service environment where there's a diversity of services that can be consumed on the cloud, ranging from network to storage, to compute, to databases, to a big data, it's very hard for a single person to be both broad and deep in all those areas. Therefore, virtual team is really the way to go. Thanks, real food for thought there. And if you wanna know more about that, we've got much more details published in our white paper on boosting IaaS and PaaS security. So if we could finish off, what is the one recommendation you would both have for customers thinking about cloud security? Shahaf, let me start with you. So the first thing to know is that cloud, the move to the cloud is a journey and work with your stakeholders and don't forget misconfiguration. Thank you. And Trila. What I would say is that don't assume that you can just extend the security capabilities or the security tools that you use on premise to the cloud. Because of the varied design patterns, the a lot of capabilities that the cloud offers, you have to understand the design patterns and essentially continue to dynamically update and tune your tools, creating those security guardrails that allows the developers to have flexibility in their design patterns. Um, and um, allow you the, uh, the assurance of the security that the guardrails offer. The key thing then is that don't assume that the security capabilities on-premise can easily extend to the cloud. Thank you both for those insights into this topic. So what we've heard is one, misconfiguration is the biggest risk with cloud. Two, Cloud is driven by developers who may or may not be security professionals. So we really need to maintain an active conversation with them and provide the tools that they need to be successful in a secure fashion. And three, cloud introduces new capabilities like serverless compute and containerization. And these new capabilities may require a new cloud oriented approach to security. We really hope that you found this video useful. And we also hope that you'll engage and look at the links that we publish on our white papers for much more detail. And we'll see you in the next video on containerization and new capabilities. Thanks again.